the point of this episode all in all is to highlight the forces of reaction that are descending upon the Western world. And I'm going to start with Canada itself. All right. Check this bullshit out. Youth in Canada voting to the right to the right of boomers is apparently because young people can't get employed and can't afford a home. Hope that helps the political discourse on this one. Now, this is across the board. Pretty much every poll. I'll just go to polling Canada in general and show you guys this shit. And of course, they got this garbage. <clears throat> This is federal polling. So to, uh, because you guys are American, you might not know this. The CPC mm-hmm. is the conservative party. That's our GOP, if you will. Okay. Pretty much. Is, CP? is your conservative CP? party? Is that- yeah, CPC. Okay. So vote, vote blue up here is a vote for reactions. <laughs> it's got <laughs> <speech. clears throat> um, And then tied for second place, we have the NDP. So that's kind of like the Sock Dems. It would be like if, like, Bernie and the squad had a party. So, okay. like, they're, they're better than the liberals, but uh, it's still, like, it's still neoliberalism just kind of, you know, with less atrocious policies. Now, the fact that they're tied with the liberals is fucking bonkers <laughs> because it's almost always been liberals and conservatives and then the NDP trailing, like, third behind. And I think that's because Canadians are just done with the liberals. Now, I I think this is a really huge missed opportunity for the NDP because they decided they decided to get into this weird alliance with the liberals and start working with the liberals, kind of how, you know, AOC and Bernie and the squad all started just, you know, Nancy pelosi it up. Same thing except mm-hmm. for different parties. And I feel like with everybody's frustration with the liberals, they could have really stood out and presented like a better option um, than at least more neoliberal like like slop. But instead, they kind of like got in bed with the liberals and now they're kind of stuck with that stink even after they kind of like abandoned the liberals and said their little deal was over. But you see the seats here. The seats in this poll are CPC 217. LPC 45, NDP 43, Bloc Québécois 35, and our Green Party is like three. It's like L, just massive L. Hmm. And as you can see, it's like, it's across the board. So we're essentially just seeing like, now I'll be the first to say, um, you know, NDP is doing better, but the biggest takeaway here is we are right in line for a massive conservative wave. And I'm going to be the first one to say the last thing this country needs right now is a conservative government. But I'll kind of analyze that a little further, but that is the last thing we fucking need. Canadians are buried in debt. Our social safety nets are already in the toilet. Not even disability pays enough for anyone to be able to survive on. Like, we're down bad. We're down real fucking bad. Wages are not even close to the cost of life. It's not close. Like, it's so, it's so stupid. And the conservatives are just going to dumpster the, cumpster and dumpster the economy. Because that's what they're good at, cumstering and dumpstering the economy. But I can I can provide a bit of analysis here, a little bit further analysis. But first, it's not just us. Austria's first far-right uh, Freedom Party is heading for its first national election win. kind of the same sort of shtick but my point is there is a 
there's a massive uh, right wing explosion pretty much the West over. We're only not seeing this in countries like that have like a functioning brain like Venezuela or I don't know if it's possible to have a conservative swing in China. It's kind of just the China. It, it's very yeah, unlikely. It, it's right in the name, you know? <laughs> can't be, can't really be right-wing communists. Well, mm-hmm. out, outside of the U.S., I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, so. A CDC voter... Hey, Cowboy Kitty. Hello. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming in. So, <clears throat> you might be seeing this kind of like reactionary wave, at least in North America. It's pretty much across the board. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I'm going to break this yeah. down. I'm going to break this down a little for people. Um... Because this kind of mirrors what I've been saying for a while, uh, but um, this excellent account, Mass Strike Now, follow them if you haven't, because they they have uh, dank memes, as the kids say, uh, lay dank lay dank pepes or whatever. Yeah, Zoomer speak. We're doing Zoomer speak. I'm gonna stop now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the cycle that we've been going through. For our whole fucking lives. First off, inspiring centrist refuses to tackle the underlying social problems that lead that led to the rise of the far right. All right, we move on. Stagnating living standards creates fertile ground for fascism. Far right win elections. Then we move on. Far right drives economy off a cliff, lowers standards of public life, and generally makes everything objectively worse. Moving on. Uninspiring centrist defeats far right with a promise of change. Moving on, and the cycle continues. This is pretty much what we go through. In Canada, in the States, this awful cycle. And I think I think a major contributor to that is this stupid lesser voting, or it's lesser evil voting. Um I think it's a major factor as to why we can't get out of this entrapment of you better vote for the centrist because the, the boogeyman rightoid is gonna is gonna is gonna turn everything into super Hitler or whatever. I'm exaggerating a little, but this is essentially it's always it's always essentially disappointing neoliberal governance that leads to these conservative waves. That leads to these conservative sweeps that we're seeing across the board. Um, you guys are American. Think back. Think back to what the temperature was like at the end of Obama. Mm-hmm. How fed up everybody was. How frustrated they were. They had eight years of the okie doke of yep, hope and change. We're gonna we're gonna get there. I'm gonna make everything better. Drone strikes all over the place. Healthcare is a fucking mess. The economy's garbage. And then what happens? A game show host wins. <laughs> Who didn't have a health care plan. But it's okay, because now he has concepts. He has concepts now, to be fair. So we have to um, give him that. <laughs> we yeah, we have to give him that point. at least. <laughs> concept of- Concep- it's in the concepts works. 2024. In the God, mm-hmm. I want to die. Um, so this is kind of the cycle we go through. Um, and it's, it's this cycle of never being able to get out of this life. And we have it in Canada too. You guys see it all day, all night long. You know, you got the conservatives saying we need to vote for the lesser evil who's orange man, or Mm. it'll be the end of the world. And then you got the, the libs saying, if we don't vote for, vote for cackles, vote for the deep state hologram over there. Thank you, Russell. Um, then it's going to be the end of the world. And we're trapped right here because getting out of that bubble represents risk. And everybody just gets scared and pisses their pants every 48 years and just falls for it. 
So <laughs> I want to make another point too. This is a point that I feel like people don't don't really take into further consideration, and I'm going to make my point uh, with an article that's kind of funny. It's kind of this is kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Um, first reading: Why is it the NDP triggering an election they can't afford one? <laughs> The party is so broke they'd struggle just to cover the travel expenses of the leader. As the Trudeau government continues to stave off an election despite ever plummeting public support, one clue as to how may be that the parties keeping them in power are too bro broke to afford a campaign. The, NP the NDP in particular counted less than $300,000 in cash in its most recent audited financial statement. At the close of 2023, the party had cash assets of just $289, $289,808. This is the exact opposite of the conservatives who are sitting on more money than they could ever legally spend in a campaign. Their cash reserves at the end of 2023 stood at $16 million, That's 197685 <laughs> That's a pittance compared to what's spent here in national elections, but I digress. <laughs> yeah, but you, you guys, you guys got your finger on the butt. Mm -hmm. like, like there's going to be also, you guys got like, we're, I, I'm jealous of all that lobby cash you guys get up there. You guys get mad yeah. lobby cash. You're jealous. You get black rock. You got big, big, big pharma. You got uh, you got you you got other lobbyists. None of them from foreign governments, though. That that doesn't happen, right? No, no, that no, wouldn't happen. No, no really, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> None that give like millions of dollars to both of your candidates, right? That that would be ridiculous. That That'd be happened. crazy. There's no way. That, yeah, nah, that's nuts. No, no. It definitely no. doesn't start with an A. I know that much. No. <clears throat> so. I bring this up, not just because I'm being stupid. I do that for free. But <clears throat> this is another point that I, I try to make. Because in this cycle of <coughs> neoliberalism, not really meeting the demands of the public, not really meeting to address the material conditions of the working class and the middle class, if you're one of those middle class believers... Um, and then there's always an opportunity for a, a far, a right wing figure to pop up as a hero right now in Canada. It's PP, -P, AKA Milhouse, AKA Pierre Polyevre. you know, where you guys are, it's obviously, you know, Zion Don. Mm -hmm. There's always, uh, there's always a, a right wing figure that pops up as a superhero. And everybody asks, like, well, fuck, why is it always a right-wing superhero? It's always a right-wing superhero because of what I'm showing you right fucking here. Right-wing politicians take advantage of these moments of neoliberal incompetence because the right has access to capital and the left doesn't, period. The right will always have access to more capital, always. That's because of their policies, however they dress them up to appear working class friendly, to appear beneficial to the everyman, they are always policies that will predominantly benefit, predominantly benefit um, the rich and powerful. Every single one of Pierre Polyev's policies are, are meticulously designed to appear appealing to working people. But when you peel them back, and I might do this next episode, when you peel them back, what you find is just a bunch of rich and powerful serving interest. And that's why they always, that's why there's this discrepancy, because th this is insane, okay? You've got a major political party that barely has anything at all, comparatively. 
Let's do some math real quick, actually, because I'm curious. One six, one two three, four five seven. <laughs> oh, wrong way. We're just gonna do some quick math here. Oh my god, okay. I give up. The calculator's freezing. But, I mean, that is, that is over 30, that's over 30 times a difference in cash money. That's fucking nuts. And this is part of the problem. And just like, look at this. That's not loading hyper. Jesus, man. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Okay, perfect. I found it. Mm -hmm. All right, so check this out. This kind of like, if you, if you compare this to the polls and what we're seeing, it almost kind of lines up. At the end of 2023, unrestricted funds available for each party. The Conservative Party of Canada, 10 million. Liberal Party of Canada, 2.1 million. NDP, 1.8 million. Cash on hand, Conservative Party of Canada, 16 million. Liberal Party of Canada, 2.8 million. NDP, 289,000. Now, when you look at the polls and then compare this, becomes really painfully obvious that this makes a difference. And this is what I mean when I refer to neoliberal incompetence, because there's always going to be a, a right-wing politician who's got a lot of wealthy people backing him and who's in bed with a lot of people who would love him to get into office <coughs> so he can pass policies that make his rich friends benefit to the best of their ability. And I mean, shit, even the liberals. Because like, let's make a quick comparison here. <laughs> 10 million, 2.1 million, 1.8 million. And then let's look back at the polls real quick. Looks pretty close. So, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that, A, we need to break the cycle, both up here in Canada and in the States. And the only way to do that at, at this point is through direct action because we're up here in Canada. If you think you're voting your way out of this, you're insane. You're you're just bonkers. We're going to be stuck in this cycle for the rest of our shitty, stupid lives unless we take action. Because the right is always going to be there to capitalize on the incompetence of the neoliberal regime. And when it comes time for the neoliberal regime to try and take the power back because the economy is in a nosedive 10 feet away from hitting the fucking ground, the liberals are always going to have more capital than anybody on the left. 